Hi guys, today I am filming my novelizations and film tie-ins video. This is currently my shelf of novelizations, film tie-ins that I've read. I got them all organised after the last few that I'd read, but obviously there's still more in my read shelves somewhere. This was inspired by a video of one of my friends on Instagram. He's done a similar video and I will link his video down below. I'm not sure how many parts this is going to be in yet. This was originally supposed to be a very different video. I was going to originally be standing in front of the camera and doing talking about these but if you think about it this is how far I'm zoomed in I'm standing at the other side of my room at the moment I couldn't actually get myself and my tripod and my camera into this space beside my bookcases get my bedside table moved out the way and still be comfortable with stuff at my back I'm gonna do it slightly differently to how I originally planned out which means taking all these books off the shelf Damn. and think about that I will get this set up and we're going straight into the video I'm trying to do these in order of the name of the film rather than authors or anything like that because there's quite a few that I would rather keep together. The first one that comes up if you're going in numerical and then alphabetical order is this one which is 10 things I hate about you and this is the obviously novelization of the film starring Heath Ledger and Julia Stiles and it's one of my favorite films from this kind of era. I love watching this film. I went through a phase where I couldn't watch it. Like after Heath Ledger died it was just too couldn't stand to see him and it's one of my favourite Heath Ledger films as well. It's a little bit dorky at times. It's probably not the best. So much truth to it actually. Even in this day and age now about however many years it is after the film was released. So this is written by David Levithan I think the name is pronounced and he has done an excellent novelisation of this. There is photos in this actually, so you do have photos there. One of the best scenes I have to say, look at the smile on his face. He probably felt like such an idiot doing that as well. The writing is quite large, so it's quite a quick book to get through and it's told in from alternative points of view. So you've got Kat's point of view, you've got Patrick's point of view as well there. Next up, after 10 things I hate about you is 13 going on 30 and I recently read this it's one of my probably most recent reads and I really enjoyed this book it really captured the film for me and this is written by Krista Roberts I'm gonna link everything down below that I can find some of these novelizations tend to go out of print quite quickly I find. If you see it and you're interested in novelizations or film tie-ins you're best off grabbing them while you can. Jennifer Garner made this film. I don't think if it had been for her, if it had been maybe some, some other type of actress, I don't think it would have worked as well. This also has photos in it. The infamous shot where she realises she has boobs and more different shots there as well. Another excellent novelisation I would say really worth getting if you enjoyed the film. Then you have 84 Charing Cross Road. Now this isn't one I'm particularly keen on. I'm just keeping it for the sake of it's a film tie-in. I wasn't that keen on the film. I saw the film first as probably with most of these. I wouldn't say this is by far one of my favourites. I not sure if I will go back and reread this again unless I was really in the mood. It is a good story but it's like the film it's deadly slow and it's by Helene Hamp. I do like the cover like the way it's got the airmail stickers and like the postage here and the stamps and it has the sequel as well. I don't think there was ever a sequel made in film. But look at that price! One Pound fifty in the UK. So we've got Amityville Horror by Jay Anson. I think I've seen the film of this but it's been quite some time if I remember correctly. I got this as a birthday present. I put off reading it, I put off reading it for quite some time and I eventually got round to reading it and I really, I wouldn't say I enjoyed it, I found it quite slow at times but it was a good read. I did enjoy reading it which is a weird thing to say but it creeped me out at the same time. 
which you don't really find with books. Like I don't tend to find books that funny sometimes. Like comedy in books doesn't come across that well. This kind of gave me a little bit of the heebie-jeebies, the creeps there. It was just one of those books that was I wouldn't have picked up for myself quite personally. I think there's a sequel to this book and I know there's sequels to the film. But I don't think I'll ever read the sequel. I think a one was quite enough. I have the novelisation of the film Armageddon. This is by M.C. Bolin. And this is quite a, a good novelisation as well. I did enjoy this one and I do like the cover art. It is really nice how you've got the... Excuse the reflection there, but how you've got the imprint of Bruce Willis there in the background. And then you've got that kind of main iconic image of all of them. So that's quite a good one. I hadn't really heard of MC Bolin before. Like, I've heard of Dave Levithan. He's done quite a few books out with the kind of novelisation genre, I suppose. I think the film has the more attention behind it and the action. And it does a pretty good job. But I think some things you just have to see, particularly with a film such as Armageddon. I mean, I can't imagine imagine being on an asteroid and drilling into it just by the by the text. There's photos in this one as well. All black and white unfortunately which does cheapen it quite a bit. So that's quite disappointing that normally with novelizations you do get full colour photos. The next one I have is Back to the Future by George Gite and it actually changes authors which is quite strange. I think if you're doing a series then it should all stay the same author in my personal opinion. I do like the cover art of these novelizations although it does change from book to book. I did buy this used so it is quite shoddy condition. You are probably, if you're looking for any of these, the likelihood is you're not going to get them brand new unless they're like the Marvel novelizations or mail coming in or for example the Disney novelizations which quite often come about. Unfortunately this one doesn't contain any photos but you can see there's been damaged that front cover there. There's been a stain on it at some point. So then you go into Back to the Future 2. And this is written by Craig Shaw Gardner. And as you can see it has more of a montage of scenes from the film. Rather than sticking to one of the iconic images. Or like the movie poster art from the third film. Which you'll see in a minute. So again this is in pretty shocking condition. As you can see from the spine. Right there. I can barely see the author's name on the spine. But this is the images that they have included from the film. So you've got Marty on the hoverboard, Marty and Doc wearing old age makeup, which I find quite funny. The DeLorean, three of them standing there. You can see how shoddy this is. But there's no pictures again. And then you've got Back to the Future Part 3 with that iconic movie image poster. I really like these movie image posters, although... Sorry, interrupted by the mailman there. That was the other reason why I couldn't fit myself behind my bedside table because I've got two parcels coming today and I didn't want to be trying to bring myself out from behind the bedside table without knocking down my tripod and get down the stairs. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, I do like this cover art for the films but I do feel like this is more taken from the second film because I'm pretty sure in the cover art for the third film or one of these cover movie posters it actually features Clara's well and she as you can see doesn't actually feature on the cover of this one but again this one's by Craig Shaw Gardner so that's right there with Martin Doc in their Wild West outfits and then the next one I've got which you've probably seen in one of my last currently reading shelves is Beaches by Iris Rainer Dart so this was a book before the film so the film is based on this book reading this completely completely changed my opinion of the book. I was quite shocked actually. I was expecting it to be just kind of straightforward copy of the book but there's so much that happens in the book that doesn't happen in the film. I mean I've loved the film for years. I'm probably repeating myself from my currently reading shell. The book, reading the book has really changed my opinion on it and I've kind of gone off the film a little bit. I think I prefer the book at points. Again I bought this used. It has an ugly sticker that I cannot get off over the front of it there it's kind of ruining that image you've got the iconic shot of Bette Midler and Barbara Hershey there 
and also they change the names as well. I mean, CC Bloom is still CC Bloom in the film, but Roberta, as she is in this book, her name gets changed. There's so many other aspects as well. Like as I said in my review, all the kind of adult themes were cut out of this. There's a lot more kind of adult nature about this book. The whole bit, if you remember from the film, where they actually kind of stop being friends and they have a big argument, and it's in the middle of like this very posh kind of shop. It's completely changed in the film. Barbara Hershey's character thinks that Cece Bloom has cheated with her husband. But what you also have is you have a book sequel called Beaches 2, I'll Be There. Now again, spoiler alert, if you have not seen the film or read the original book, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I did have to put a big spoiler alert on my currently reading shelf when I was reading this but this is the sequel to the book there was never a sequel made to the film which I'm not sure would have worked as this book was deathly slow like it was so unbearably slow and I found the first book much better to get into what I would say with this one is only read it if you did actually enjoy the film or the first book I didn't realize it existed either of the books until I don't know if I was searching for novelizations on Google or 80s movie novelizations something along those lines but this popped up in one of those lists. Beaches 2 probably not worthwhile reading unless you want a book that's going to take you quite a long time to read. I mean I struggled through it and it hits a major dip about halfway through like when nothing actually happened and there's some aspects I would have liked to have seen more of but I can't go into too much detail without having a major spoiler alert. Bill and Ted's bogus journey. Now you're thinking Michelle why aren't you doing Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? There's not actually a novelization of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure or if there is I have not been able to find it and I search every little while. Every time I see this book on my shelf I go back and I search for Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure in a book form and if you can find one please comment below because I would love to get it. I would love to have two of them and I'm not sure why they only decided to write a novelization of the second film. I will be ranting about this at some other point because there's another film that annoys me that only has the sequel as a novelization. This is by Robert Tyne and hopefully it's going to be a novelization of the third film. Should it ever get made. There are no photos in this book which is disappointing. If you see any novelizations at all anywhere in these videos then please let me know because I may, like there's obviously some that I have that I haven't read yet like the Rocky novelizations I think, and I'm still buying them every so often so there probably will be updates to this video as they come up but the first of my Disney novelizations is Brave and this is by Irene Trimble so it is pretty wrecked. As you can see it has a massive crease across the front cover. The strange thing I find with Disney novelizations is it's normally quite hard to find the, the person who's written it which I think is a bit unfair. For example there is the title page inside and that's where you can generally find the author's name. The good thing about the Disney novelizations is they won't take you long to read. They're normally sort of between about 100 to 125 pages. Seems to be the kind of formula there that they stick to. And then you normally have the colour photos inside. Then we have the Braveheart book by Randall Wallace. Pretty sure I've got another book by him as well. Potentially Pearl Harbour, kind of iconic, historically inaccurate Mel Gibson. And obviously you recognise this first part from the start of the film. There's no photos in this. I think this was published before the film. It's quite a good book. I would highly recommend it. It's quite a dense book as well. So there's a, a lot of text in it and there's a lot of information as well. I still love the film even though it's really really historically inaccurate. I still love it. Another one of my favourite films here is Butterfly Effect. I prefer the director's cut to the original theatrical cut but there is a novelization of this by James Swallow. If you love this film as well then definitely pick this one up. It's along a similar line of Braveheart. It's quite dense text as you can see and it's quite a long thick book as well. That is the iconic, saying iconic a lot. This is the kind of the main image that you normally see on like the DVD, the movie posters. 
What was interesting, I remember going to see this at the cinema and I actually missed the first part because we couldn't get a parking space outside the cinema. I actually missed the first part so I missed some of it and it was only when I when I read this book, I didn't have the DVD or the Blu-ray at that point. When I read this book I actually realised what I'd missed out on. I mean I do adore this film, it is really good. And I find that with novelisations they, they're not always widely available and for some films they should be which is quite disappointing which is why I'm always looking for other ones that I haven't heard of or film tie-ins I hadn't previously heard of because I mean you can search for like beaches in books or say stigmata is one that I always think should be a novelization as well and you just don't really find them unless you can google it and find the author's name but sometimes you have to google like beaches novelization or beaches tie-in book something along those lines you search for stigmata it comes up with loads and loads of stuff and it's impossible to filter out I have dare Daredevil by Greg Cox. So there is a novelization of Electra as well. Daredevil by Greg Cox is another excellent movie novelization. I haven't read some of these books in quite some time. I don't really remember if there's extra scenes in these. Most of the time there is or there's extra lines of dialogue that were taken from the original screenplay that these are based on and then for example cut from the final film. But there is photos in this one are very hard to get into. More peanuts. And I love the relationship between those two. I'm just kind of devastated it didn't really work out. Although he did make an appearance in the Electra film but it was in the deleted scenes. He got cut. The next one up is The Day After Tomorrow and this is by Whitley Stryber. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. This was another one that I don't know how I managed to stumble across this or if it came up in like my Amazon recommendations or something like that. But again, they're just not widely available or widely listed unless you're looking for like Marvel, Suicide Squad, all that kind of thing. And even when I look up like novelization, I tend to just find the same ones time and time again so you don't really find stuff like this that's coming up there. There's the author's name if you want it there. I used to have a poster of this up on my door at one point. I think it was this one anyway. This one doesn't have any photos but it's obviously used because someone's written in pencil on the inside and as you can see from the spine it's not in particularly good nick. And it's quite dirty but I think you can get a good idea of it from there. Next up is Daylight and this is by Ma Max Allen Collins. I have a couple of his books. I think he's also done one of the Mummy novelizations, but I think he's done another book as well that I have of his. So and he does write a lot of other books so it seems like he's kind of been asked to do some of the movie novelizations at some point in his career as well. And this has a sticker on it saying it was one dollar in the clearance. And you've got that image on the front there. I really do enjoy this film actually as well. I really think it's such a brilliant film. I need to go back and re-watch it one of these days because it's just so, it's so full of tension. It really is. There's no photos in this one. It is just the text, different people from different points of view there. I think it's a little bit more disjointed than I found the film personally just because it's trying to get in so many different points of view whereas it flows more seamlessly in the film that I find. And then we have Demolition Man and this is by Richard Os Osborne. I thought it was by Robert Tyne at first, I had to double check that but it's actually not anywhere on the actual front spine or back cover. It's on the inside that is actually by Richard Osborne. Going down the kind of Disney novelization route here. Just the the movie poster there of Stallone and Snipes. As you can see there is nothing on the spine. It has photos as well. Fortunately once again it's black and white photos. And weirdly enough, at no point does Sandra Bullock appear, but you can also see that it's not like the kind of glossy pages either. It just feels like normal, slightly thicker paper. But it seems to be kind of more photos from the kind of beginning of the film. I remember, funny story about this film, I had the big the film taped off of I think it was channel 5 and I actually missed a whole chunk of the beginning 
because the recording didn't start when it was supposed to so I missed a whole chunk of the beginning so I didn't actually know until I saw, until I like got the DVD, how it actually began. I think I got it and he'd just been arrested and was about to be frozen. So I missed the whole lead up to that. As you can see, it's by Richard Osborne. So then we have The Devil's Advocate and that's by Andrew Niederman. And I hope I'm saying that correctly. It is a strange spelling, but obviously if you want to know, I'll be linking everything down below. But again, with the movie art, you don't really find that novelizations deviate much from whatever the movie art or the movie posters are. I mean, I did like this novelization. That doesn't say £42 or something, because I definitely didn't pay that price for it. Hopefully it's just a 42 randomly. The problem I have, like, obviously I saw the film before I read the book. I don't actually like the ending of the film. I don't like the way it ends. I don't understand really the way it ends. It ruins the film for me, but I like the rest of it. It's just a bit odd. So that's by Andrew Needham in there. Quite a thick novelization, actually. Now, this is an ex-library copy, which I got used. And and I've actually read more than once. I keep forgetting that I've actually read it, which isn't good. That's not a good sign, is it? This is why some of the books, I'm still not 100% sure on how I want to organise these books. I was originally going to keep it novelisation only, and I did originally think of that because I bought two copies of another novelisation, but I tend to find that there's some that I don't want to include because I know they're there, they're going to take up too much space. So, for example, like Time Traveller's Wife, I don't really want to include that in here but again it should really be in here because it is a film tie-in so I'm still undecided about the whole layout of these plus I really only have like two shelves free at the moment if I keep continuing to get them the way I'm getting them plus all the ones that I haven't read yet I'm going to struggle for space but this is The Devil's Arithmetic I've seen the film and then I realised there was a young adult children's book about it as well so I got that and it's by Jane Yolen possibly but it's got a really cool cover obviously published before the film was with I forget her name as you can see it's next library copy it's still got the I wish they hadn't torn this out because I do like to see these sometimes I like to see where they've been and who's had them but it's from the Frogmore Community College possibly the actual good thing about this is the film does stick pretty closely to the book which is quite good and sometimes you don't often find that. Beaches for example. There is actually a novelization of Dirty Dancing. Who knew? I didn't for quite some time. I don't remember how I came across this but it's another one of those ones that doesn't have the author's name anywhere on the front cover as you would generally expect. There is no text on the front cover apart from Dirty Dancing and that iconic image of the two of them together. Nothing on the spine either. Really not as such a standard novelization. It's got the photos, it's got slight bits of text as you can see but it's really more about the photos and short little snippets about what was happening in the film at that point and then you've got a colour section I've not broken the spine of this so that's why I'm not opening it out fully for you and then you've got a background to the film it's not a true novelization but i've still kept it in here because when you see that on your shelf you don't really think well what is that who's it written by so i just want to keep it separate and in with this lot just now but it is written and i use that term very loosely by gordon volk volk i think that's how you say it 